What is the role of ONS in coordinating national COVID-19 data collection efforts in the UK? One of the roles of ONS is to lead the government statistical service. So right across government, uh, ONS plays a role in, in working very closely uh, with different arms of government to make sure that there is some coordination uh, in uh, the, the data that are prepared uh, for COVID. So particularly we've worked closely with the Department of Health uh, and Social Care uh, over the course of the epidemic to improve uh, the reporting of, of daily deaths data. We've worked very hard uh, with the Treasury and the Department um, of, of Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy to ensure uh, that the economic data are being uh, brought together quickly and efficiently uh, to uh, the national effort. Uh, and I think as a National Statistical Institute, with that role right across government, it does mean that we have to step up and provide uh, a coordinating role. Uh, and that's something we've been very proud to do. What are the key national sources of data for monitoring the pandemic? We have worked very hard uh, on this uh, and I'm going to start with some new things that we've done but I'll also mention the way that we have adapted some of our business uh, as usual. So on the, on, on, on the new front we, we, we've stepped up a new business survey that went out very very quickly to over 16,000 uh, businesses uh, and which aims to to find out uh, the way they are reacting to the economic aspects uh, of the pandemic. We stood up a, a weekly social survey, which enables us to understand how people are, are responding to, to some of the non-pharmaceutical interventions that the government has put into place and how they're feeling uh, about uh, the data. We have a very new, very large survey uh, that is collecting um, swabs from people to measure the prevalence of the virus in, virus in the population and collecting blood to measure the level of antibodies uh, in, in the population. And this, by going back to people over time, will allow us not only to estimate prevalence, but the rate uh, of transmission. We have really worked hard in our data science campus to use some very innovative uh, ways of, of collecting uh, data, um, for example, on footfall at major stations following uh, lockdown, to, to look at the impact uh, of that kind uh, of lockdown. So we have innovated and brought very quickly a really large set uh, of new data sources that government can use uh, to, to be able to plan. But at the same time, some of our, our business as usual statistics particularly our, our deaths data. We have worked very, very hard to, to make them as timely and as useful uh, as possible for government. Uh, and we produce based on death registrations with a lag of about 10 days. So we've worked with our colleagues in the Department of Health to get more timely data, which may not have the full coverage, but is able to help plan uh, the, the government's response um, to the pandemic. And we've used those death data to link with census data to understand the impact uh, of, um, of the, the virus on the people in different communities or with different um, demographic or um, ethnic characteristics. And bringing those out regularly has really helped uh, government to plan. At the same time, you know, our labour force survey remains incredibly important uh, in um, the planning, and I'll return to that a little later. Um, and we really have worked hard now in the next stage, really to, to make sure that our, our measurement of GDP, of inflation, are, are, are absolutely there and ready and accurate as the government plans its way out of the economic challenges that the pandemic has brought. How is ONS ensuring the continuity and quality of key statistical operations in the face of restrictions to conduct field operations? 
we, along with many other statistical institutes, I suggest, have had to stand down our face-to-face -face field work. And that meant very quickly uh, moving to telephone collection for our, our labour force survey. That, um, the good news is that we knew something about the biases that already existed, so we were able to adjust for that. But, but very, very important to do that uh, very, very quickly. Um, migration statistics, we're needing to, to work very quickly towards use of administrative data. So in many ways, some of the challenges that we have faced um, are things that we would have wanted to have done uh, very, very quickly. In addition, when it comes to measuring inflation, um, we have used things like web scraping of prices rather than face-to-face -face, um, collection. And so we have been quickly and I hope effectively changing some of the ways that we collect data in order to make sure that we are able to provide the data that our government needs. How does ONS strike the right balance between timeliness and quality of data in the current emergency situation? I think it's a really good question. Government needs timely data. There is no question about that. But equally, government does not need wrong information to make poor policy. So while um, you can talk about quality, Quality against timeliness, you absolutely need really to be thinking about what can you do with quality in the short term, um, as well as perhaps uh, improving on that in the long term. So the, the perhaps the best example of this might be on deaths data, where we know that our death registration data will be the most comprehensive, but it comes with a 10 day lag. So we've worked with the Department of Health and Social Care to be able to produce daily data of all uh, the deaths where there was a positive test for COVID. So that th those data are daily. There will be some that are not in those data where, for example, a practitioner has not got a po positive test but feels um, that the cause of death was COVID. But we believe that, that the data that we do have are very close to good and therefore good or timely uh, reporting. Um, we're also looking very, very hard at how there are some fast economic indicators that we could um, bring uh, over the next few uh, months to enable government to be able to understand what is happening in the economy while waiting for, if you like, the monthly GDP uh, data. What is ONS doing to ensure that relevant data and information on the spread and impact of COVID-19 is open and readily accessible to the public and policymakers, while at the same time ensuring privacy and confidentiality of personal information? I think it's um, incredibly important that we are open uh, with the data that we use. And we have developed over the last few years a secure research service and that secure research service allows bona fide researchers to be able to access data against um, ethical uh, agreement and against um, the research project that they wish to do being demonstrably in the public interest. Uh, and we've worked very hard uh, during the pandemic to enable for the first time researchers to be able to access the secure research service from their homes. And this is, I think, a really major um, breakthrough. I talked earlier about a very large uh, study that we are doing, uh, which um, is enabling us to monitor prevalence in the population and um, the level of antibodies. The protocol for this study was made open and available uh, before the data were collected, there are regular um, announcements and publications of the results and uh, the data are in real time available on a secure research service for secondary analysis.
this is just an example there are many more what uh, tools or platforms are being used to communicate information related to covid19 to users including the general public the um the list is limitless you know clearly we have our regular publications we have a number of um, ad hoc publications which which bring um, data to the public very very quickly we are feeding in to government policy um, on, a, on a regular basis so that the 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 government's dashboards have a lot uh, of ons data um, in addition we use if you like um, different sources of of data such as um, of, of communications such as um, social media um, to be able to to get to people and we are regularly um, doing interviews both uh, in the on the television on, on radio uh, and in, in other fora to be able to make sure that, that our results are communicated in a way that gives the maximum exposure to the population. Is ONS following and or adapting any practices in data collection either here in the UK or globally for data comparability across countries? It's a very important challenge and one of the questions that is always asked is, is there a league table of the challenge faced by different countries um, from COVID-19? And my answer is that Sadly, it is not possible to have any kind of coherent league table. You can see which countries are most affected and those countries which are perhaps a little less affected, but you can't really um, make a league table for, for two reasons. One, because what is reported is not as alike as one might like. So some countries do things based sometimes on samples. Other countries have different uh, timings. So actually being able to, to compare the numbers, um, in this case of deaths, uh, is actually very, very difficult. But then we know that COVID, secondly, is impacted by, for example, demographic factors. So the age structure of the population is important. Um, we know that it is likely to be transmitted more in inner cities where there is high density of population. So the degree of urbanization of the population is going to be important. So for my sense, you know, one really does need to um, be very careful in making international comparisons. The other thing which moves slightly away from that, but is still incredibly important, is to recognize that there will be deaths not directly from COVID, but which are a result of COVID. And to catch, capture them, one really does need a way of using all-cause mortality excess deaths. Um, and again, I think there are real potential opportunities to do that, but there remain challenges if for the two reasons uh, that I just described. In your view, what are the most promising innovations in terms of the use of new data sources and new methods to address the need for detailed, timely and high quality information on the pandemic? Can you tell us more about how ONS Data Science Campus, for example, is contributing in this regard? Yeah, I mean, I think there are enormous opportunities at all times to innovate. Uh, and I don't think you know, one should, if you like, wait for um, a crisis like a pandemic uh, to, to innovate. And that's why we have uh, a data science campus. That's why there are some of the things that the data science campus can do, for example, web scraping to understand um, the, 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 the number of people um, who are asking for, for Google Maps around particular um, high um, footfall uh, places, that is important. Uh, we have used web scraping as well 
to be able to identify the availability of the cross, across the country of the sorts of goods that people buy in a um, crisis. So, for example, uh, we knew at the beginning of the, the lockdown that there was great difficulty buying hand sanitizer anywhere and we could point to where it was possible. We've taken that basket of goods and follow its price uh, over time. And given that our, our Prime Minister uh, has just had a baby, the good news for him is that we can say that nappies have reduced uh, in price. Uh, and so we're able to, to follow all these kinds of uh, things very much. The Data Science Campus has an enormous role to play. I would also say that it is not just the Data Science Campus that has innovated, it's been absolutely brilliant, but some of the innovations uh, around very quick reporting. So uh, I mentioned our, our social survey out on a Friday, stop data in uh, on a at four o'clock on Monday morning, results to the government by midday. That kind of speed of innovation, of, of delivery is incredibly important at a time like that and requires innovation right across uh, the organization. As does, to go back to the, the very large prevalence survey, the fact that those data are going into the secure research service in real time takes an enormous amount of effort from right across the office to innovate and to do so at pace and at a time when we're all working from home as well. It is a really exciting and innovative time. What are your views on how new solutions developed in this phase can become our new normal? Is there something we're learning from this crisis and the way national statistical offices are adapting to it? I think there are so many new normals. And let me just start with a different one. You know, alongside many other national statistics offices uh, across the world, we have moved very quickly to work from home. That brings with it both opportunities um, and, and challenges, you know, ensuring people's well-being when they're working and um, perhaps on their own while they're trying to manage caring responsibilities with children being at home as well. Ensuring that we are making sure that everybody feels that they are contributing. These are things that absolutely you have to worry about as a National Statistics Office, but at the same time, some of the things that we have learned will become a new normal. I believe, you know, for example, we need to be thinking very much uh, about more flexible working in the future, perhaps more than we have in the past. We can work much more perhaps on a basis of trust with our colleagues. Uh, and those kinds of changes in the way we work are things that it seems to me are really positives. At the same time, we have really upped our speed in which we've used some administrative data. That's a new normal that we need to seize. And if we can stand up things very quickly in a crisis, why can't we do things like that all the time? Now, I recognize that some people have been working incredibly hard and we need to build things into a sustainable uh, way for all our, our teams. But at the same time, we've demonstrated that we can do things at pace, with quality, and that are incredibly relevant to government decision making. Those aren't things we can possibly afford to lose. What are ONS's plans for the post-COVID-19 period, including for addressing the new data needs to understand the impact on the economy and all other sectors of society? Well, I think the first thing to say is that it is a very brave person who says post-COVID, because some of the coronaviruses that exist in the population have been around for over 200 years. So it is extremely likely, in my view, that we will move into a time where we are controlling COVID, where it is in the population, but at a very low level. And uh, the part of the control 
will be through treatments and vaccinations. Now, it may be some time before we get there. And so we absolutely need to be working on ways in the meantime of identifying and acting on outbreaks very quickly. And ONS has been part of the government's strategies for using data and data science to identify um, outbreaks, and it will continue um, so to do. But equally, we know that the economy is going to take a very big hit from the government actions, the right government actions to, to impact uh, on COVID-19. And given that, um, we need to work tirelessly to make this recession a, a steep V-shaped recession, if at all possible. The, the last thing we need is an L-shaped recession, because an L-shaped recession will bring with it a real push of many people into unemployment and poverty. And, and we know that, that pushes into poverty and unemployment result in increases in health and increases in, in mortality. So there is an enormous amount that the government knows it needs to do to make sure we come out of this um, economic challenge quickly. And ONS has to be at the heart of that through fast economic indicators, through ensuring uh, that our measurements of, of unemployment and the skill bases in the country are, are quick and early, uh, that we are, we are reacting. Our job is not to measure what we measure. Our job is to react to changes in the economy and measure those changes. That's why a National Statistical Institute is always in a state of change. And so uh, ONS will be reacting very, very quickly um, to um, the kinds of decisions um, that are, are needed to, to provide data, to inform government policy, and to provide uh, data on the changing economy, and to help government steer us on a course out of uh, the, the, the hit that the economy is going to take. Uh, how are you adapting statistical capacity development efforts to the new situation? For example, how can developed countries continue providing technical assistance and collaborating with statistical offices in developing countries? I think it's incredibly important that right across the globe, uh, we are supporting each other, sharing best practice uh, and uh, working to make sure uh, that we are supporting uh, and informing all our governments. ONS has a number of partners <clears throat> with countries in various low income uh, countries and we met recently with for example uh, our partners from Rwanda, from Ghana and from Kenya for a discussion around what we were all doing to support our governments uh, through this Covid uh, pandemic and what we might innovate and how we might support each other uh, and as we go through we will continue to share best practice to to support each other uh, and as we move further into the pandemic getting back to helping people with the next round of censuses or other uh, important uh, statistical priorities we are a global family of national statistics institutes and it's critical in my view that we work together for the global good.